So, um, you know, anytime I, I speak to someone, I try to do my research and, and really like find nuggets that, you know, you don't talk about in other interviews mm -hmm. and that people don't know about you. And I stumbled upon something that I don't even know if it's accurate or not. And I'd love to ask you about it if I could. Are sure. you familiar with a, a profile that I don't even know if, honestly, I don't, I, I read it two times. I don't know if it's about you. It was in 2007 in Esquire, written by a man named Mike Sager, entitled Mike Sager. The Secret Life of a Beautiful Woman. Is that about yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. This is the you most know, fascinating it, it, profile I've ever read. Your name is oh only written gosh. in full once. Yeah. And it, it's, the, it's the greatest thing I've ever read about you because I learned all these yeah. things that I don't think a lot Thank of people know you. about you. Yeah, I, I love that you found that and looked that up. Well, first of all, he's, an, he's, a, he's a brilliant writer. Um, used to write for Rolling Stone is, and, and is decorated. So it was a very cool um, piece. It was an honor to, 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 to do an editorial in Esquire magazine at that time. And it came off the tail of, I did a campaign for Chevis Regal at the time. And it was a shot of me by a big fashion photographer of me coming out of a sports car where you just saw stilettos and legs and the sexy skirt. And you didn't even know it was me. It was like cleavage and legs. And the caption was, yes, God is a woman. And it was so controversial and so like just ripped by, you know, it was taken off and certain, it was, it was like a big deal. Okay. And from that, um, I think they ran those images in Esquire, but it was a really interesting moment in my life to spend a week with, uh, you know, uh, uh, with Mike and, and have him dive deep into my life and, um, you know, the behind the scenes of what it was like to be me. And I have to revisit that. I actually, I haven't read that since the time that it came out. It would be really interesting to read about little me. <laughs> I'd like to read you a, a part and ask okay. you a couple of follow-ups. I really don't even remember it. That's wonderful. Amazing. This is great. Totally look that up. Um, this is a quote from that piece, which I would urge anyone to read. It's, uh, I mean, as a writer, it's fantastic. And, uh, as, as a journalist, as, I mean, it's just great, but I, I honestly didn't know if it was you. Cause I was like, holy crap. Okay. This is one part. Quote, is. She's been kidnapped by a bodybuilder, stalked by a Persian nightclub owner, electronically surveyed by an Israeli mobster, relieved <laughs> okay. of her worldly possessions by a family of wealthy Egyptians, sued by a downstairs neighbor who claimed that her vocal lovemaking destabilized his energy. Is that true? All that's All true? true. All true. All true. God. Boy, I really see this is this is my point. The younger me did not know how to edit anything. Yeah, shit, that's all true. I I mean, where where do we start? I mean, in a nutshell, the dramatic moments in my in my very full and fun younger years. Yeah, I, I you were kidnapped this, this. by a bodybuilder? Um I, I, I was actually dating somebody who was a professional bodybuilder at the time and he was very unstable, not to mention was roided out and after breaking up the relationship yeah he just wasn't willing to accept that and looking back at that yeah like I, I think there are parts of my life that you just you block out in survival I haven't even thought about that nor even discussed that with my daughters or anything like that just the dangers and the um the need to know how to navigate certain situations now we talk about all that stuff so openly but yeah and I had to um you know navigate that in the most strategic way possible to sort of get out of it and it was like a whole series of legal things after that but yeah i forgot about that forgot all about that but i was okay i was okay i was I'm, I'm uh, happy i mean it's it, you read that and you're like this isn't that sounds terrible yes uh, what a life <laughs> it's uh, not funny what, what an does, exciting gangster life yeah yes I, gangster. No, I feel like there should be a movie written about you like you have like this alter ego as a spy relieved of your worldly possessions by a family of wealthy egyptians what does that even mean what happened? I was I, I was engaged to an Egyptian and um, broke off the engagement when I realized that it was not going in the right direction. So ended the possibility of, of marriage and his family didn't take that very well. They were also very, very religious and conservative and um, relieved of my worldly possessions. I got into a lawsuit because I had a lot of my personal things stored in one of their homes and they refused to give them back. And I'm talking like everything that I owned Whoa. and it was sort of the punishment of breaking their son's heart. So that was another lawsuit. <laughs> another oh my lawsuit. gosh. Look, this God, is I crazy. I forgot about that one too. Yeah. How many Life times have love. you been engaged? Because in this article in 2007, it said four times. At the time it was four times. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe seven. Wow. Maybe, maybe not. 
wait, this is eight. Wait, this is eight. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> serial, serial fiance. Oh, it's terrible. That's terrible. No, I was in love with love, to be honest. This is a really fun interview because you have the guts and the courage to ask all the things that no one talks about. I was in love with love, I think, um, unapologetically. And I really wanted to be married and have a family. But I think I was just always in love. And I think I was a really bad picker. <laughs> Until now. Until, Until now. now. But, it, but is there a part of you, and you recently got engaged to uh, Scott, right? Scott yes. Rigsby. Uh, congratulations. Yes. Mazel tov Thank to both you. of Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Um, but is there a part of you, you're supremely happy, everything's going great, and you're like, you know what, I've done this now seven times, this would be the, maybe we don't do this, maybe we just stay yeah. as boyfriend, girlfriend, old school, like, is there any yeah. trepidation? Um, gr you know, great dialogue to have with oneself, I mean, that would seem the obvious, you know, some people are like, why are you doing it again? I didn't think I would ever get married again, and then along came Scott, and it's just right on, on every level, and I say that now as a woman, I say that with the experience that I bring from past relationships, um, on, on so many, in so many different areas, as a father, as a man, as a friend, a partner, um, cerebrally, physically, chemically, there's everything is right. And, um, so I've never, I've never questioned that. And he's also very traditional. So, um, that's a weird word to use for him. Let me rephrase that. He's, he believes in the, the entity of marriage and, um, you know, that, that commitment. And so I, it feels right. It, it feels really beautiful and, and, and good. And we don't know how and when, um, but it's never felt so right before. So that's good. And it sounds like you're very happy and I'm happy for you. And, and could I ask, and by the way, if, if this is two parts, you know, I come from the Howard school, Howard Stern school of interviewing. <laughs> oh, so boy. This is, um, I, I, I read also that you, you filed for divorce right before the pandemic, right? It was like literally like the week, March, um, 2020, it got finalized. Oh, it's finalized. Let yes. me think. Um, you probably know more than I know. Uh, <laughs> That sounds weird. You know what? You might be right. You, you might have finalized right before then. It was, yeah, we, we weren't really rushing to get through it, but I think you're right. The reason I ask that is the pandemic hits and it's pretty darn depressing and dark and you've just gone through, you know, a traumatic life altering moment. Um, how were those early days for you? Because now you're, you're obviously you have kids, but you're, you're no longer married. For that to happen right when the world changed, how was that? Um, I feel like it was happening for a long time. Okay. So to give you perspective, you know, oftentimes we've exited before we exit, right. you know? Um, I also had a, a pretty long and loving and, um, historic relationship with David Charvet. So we had, um, we were both kind of in it together. I, 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 I think that's accurate. And it was a long time coming. So it wasn't, um, it was, it was as peaceful and as loving as a departure could be for two people and two parents. So super grateful for that. But dating me <laughs> after that, dating me, me dating um, was really hard and I, I wasn't great at it and I didn't really date and I wanted to date. So I'll just get, be really real about it. I really wanted to date. Um, but I didn't know how to date because clearly serial lover, but mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I'm definitely a monogamous and a co committed kind of a person. So I, I think I was looking for something very deep at a time where most people weren't, and it's a different world, you know, the dating app world and, um, just life late forties as a single person in LA is really weird. So, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 you can imagine, you know, what that was like. And I sort of accidentally met Scott, you know, when I was just warming up to that, you know, I'm going to have this, you know, year of my life and date and easier said than done. So we were both maybe not looking for a relationship and we found each other and then made a responsible decision that, you know, we wanted to make that commitment. Is it especially tough as a mother as well as a mother of older children to, yeah, I mean, they're dating too now, right? And so yeah, weird. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine they are. Um, is, is that a, a kind of a mental mind trick? Yeah. I mean, I, I, my mate relationship with my children is very sacred. So, you know, very private at home and very respectful here. Um, I think they've seen me with two people after their father and that was it. And I, I think that's really important. Um, but also realistic, you know, there are a lot of people 
you know, after the destruction of a, a marriage and the rebuilding of a life, um, don't want to expose their children to that. I'm very real and very honest with my kids. And I think they genuinely want me to be happy, both of us, their father and myself. They're really on board and they're really excited about this new life and, and marriage and future with Scott. Uh, back to that great piece. Quote, her first night in Los Angeles was spent locked in a laundry room in a house in the Hollywood Hills seeking refuge from an erstwhile acting, acting teacher. Is that true? That's true. God, what? it's all so dramatic. I won an acting scholarship um, back in the day that brought me to Los Angeles. from, a, And it was a, just a really creepy bad man that awarded the scholarship that clearly had other intentions. Um, oh so gosh. once again, I had to, I had to weasel my way out of that, but um, you know, I had a great support system and family and a good head on my shoulder. So I wasn't gonna, you know, I wasn't going to really, you know, cave to that, but yeah, I mean, God, I, I have to reread this article. My it's very dramatic. It kind of, it, it, it blows my, <laughs> how has there not been a movie about your life? I mean, I, it sounds like, and I how know, does it, it how does no good. one know all of this stuff? Like, I just, don't know. <laughs> no one's dared to ask. I don't know. It's so crazy. Um, is, do you need to take a call or something? Is everything okay? No, yeah, everything's fine. My daughter was calling me twice. Was trying to, my, my children override my do not disturb. So now I'm okay. <laughs> okay, okay. And I know you have a heart out here, so, and I will respect that. Um, Thank you. But, but this, this is amazing. I, I also want to ask you about uh, this eighth grade boyfriend who purposely flunked eighth grade to stay back with you. Is that true? Who is this guy? This guy sounds like the, the most loyal man in the world. Maybe this should have been the guy. I maybe right. I wonder where he is. His name was Brett Gray. That is true. Um, that is true. He was a year. He was a year older, and he did stay back a grade. I mean, I can't say that it was. Looking back now, could it possibly because be because of a girl? Me, I don't know. I would think so. Yes. You think deliberately ninth. deliberately flunking the uh, ninth at flunking eighth grade to stay yes. back and leave me to go to high school? Oh, that sounds terrible. I mean, it's the most romantic thing I've ever heard someone ever do. You know did you what? guys stay together for a long time? I hope you did. Yes, we did. I think so, too. You know what? That is chivalry. Flunk. Flunk. Yeah. Drop. You know what? Sabotage I've never heard someone education. do that. <laughs> Where is this guy? I'd love to meet him. What a legend. What a legend. Yes. God. Well, I hope you I stayed really, together for a while. I really I, had I, a terrible effect on men, didn't I? Well, I don't, I don't know if you had the effect or that. I don't know. I, I mean. I mean. It's not look. It's not sound. This isn't sounding good. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. Uh, you're Brooke Burke, and uh, you know, people do crazy things. For example, electronically surveyed by an Israeli mobster it sounds like the scariest things I ever go through in one's life. Someone sounds spot- very homeland, doesn't it? Yes. Like, you see, this sounds like like I like I want to be in that life. Oh wait, I was. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Ariel Hawani Show. If you want to check out some of our old episodes or if you want to stay up to date with all the great things that we are doing here, please do like and subscribe to this here page. Trust me, some really cool things are coming up.